What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is your review for Bell Collective, Season 3, Episode 4, I think. So we start this episode with Sogucci and JJ and his mama coming to live with them. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I don't believe it. I don't believe nothing about this storyline. I didn't believe it when they introduced it to us in the first episode. And I really don't believe it now. I feel like this is production's way of trying to push on us a mama character for this show, right? It seems like all of these reality shows, not just the urban ones, but all of them, have to push on us this out-of-the-box, un unorthodox mama. So we have Miss Wanda, we have Mama D, we have jo uh, 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 um, 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 Mama Joyce. You know, you can go down the list of all of the mamas on all of these shows, and I feel like this is their way of introducing her to us, but I'm just not here for it. And here's the main reason why. The storyline has no beginning, no middle, and no end. It makes no sense. You say, well, my mama coming, Why? Oh, I don't know. She just said she need to change. Well, how long is she staying? I don't know. She didn't say. And she just pops up in this convertible and they have this whole dialogue about, you know, um, her, the rules and she eat, her, she drinks her coffee at 430 in the morning and she don't want the new coffee maker. She want a percolated coffee maker. Well, then you should have bought your percolating ass coffee maker with you. Okay. How, like they could have gave us a story. They could have gave us something, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, mama's house is being renovated. Mama had a flood. She's got to get some work done. Mama sold her house, and she's in the process of moving to a, you know, a smaller house or moving, and the, the new apartment ain't ready or the new. Give us a story to go with it. But people don't just pop up and stay indefinitely. I don't care who they are, mama, not mama, whoever. You ain't give me no story to go with it. You just gave me this question mark at the end and it don't make no sense to me okay so anyway but well, we're gonna go ahead so mama showed up and you know and why do y'all have plastic on y'all floor they have a white carpet but they have plastic on the floor to protect the white carpet then maybe you shouldn't have a white carpet in an area where you have high traffic i had a friend of mine growing up and they had a white room in their house Everything in that room was white. The carpet was white. The furniture was white. Um, the, the walls were painted like a red. Like, you know, the walls popped. But everything else in that room was white. We were not allowed to tiptoe in that room. That room was strictly for when they had important guests. I don't even mean the regular guests. The regular guests went over to the regular living room. But, you know, when you had the people you was really trying to impress that you brought out the good china for, that's who went in that white room. So if y'all really that sensitive about keeping a white carpet white, then maybe you shouldn't have that in the area where y'all chilling, watching TV, drinking your red wine. But okay, do you, boo, do you. So then we have this scene with Cliff and um, Latrice, where Latrice is trying to talk to Cliff about being upset about, about the whole Josh situation and him showing up at M-Bar. So she starts off with an apology. Girl, what you apologizing for? That man showed up where you were, embarrassed you in front of not just your friends, but your employees, called you out your name, called your employees slash friends out of their name, grabbed you by your arm, disrespected production, and then proceeded to stand over you the rest of the night and watch you like a hawk and watch what you were doing. So you start off the conversation with him with an apology? And can I remind y'all that this is now the third story version of this story we've gotten? Because the first version of the story we got was he feels like I lied to him about something. Um, and that's why he's mad, right? The second one was, well, um, um, something about we're doing a scene and I told him he couldn't be in the scene and he was mad because I told him he couldn't film the scene with us. And so that's why he was mad. Then we got, oh, well, I didn't tell him that I was going out for drinks after work and he's mad about that because I'm supposed to basically get his permission because that's what he said. He didn't say, because she said, I'm sorry I didn't tell you I was coming. He said, well, you know you didn't get permission. You know you got to get permission. So it wasn't even that you didn't call him and say, hey, I'm going out for drinks after work. You didn't get his permission to go for drinks after work. That's what he said. I didn't say it. He said it. So she starts off with an apology and then says to him, well, are you going to apologize? He was like, I ain't got nothing to apologize for. And that's why I know that this is what he does all the time. Because he don't feel like he did nothing wrong. This is what he does. This is who he is. This is what y'all relationship is all about. He don't feel like he did nothing wrong. What he apologizing for? 
He doesn't feel like there's an apology that needs to be made. So then they go on to have a conversation and you are talking to him about you want to be seen as an equal. And he was like, but you're not. We, we're not equal. We, we're, not, we're not the same. And I was just like, okay. So this whole conversation was her trying to get him to understand what he did that upset her, why he did, why it was wrong what he did, and how it made her feel. And his whole response was, Like, he really don't feel no kind of way about none of it. I said, see, you sitting here waiting for something that ain't gonna never come. This man done told you who he is, what he is. And you've been married to him. And at the end of the day, the problem isn't that he's doing these things. The problem is that we're seeing him do these things. Later on in the episode, she has a conversation with her mama. Now, she told us that she basically grew up, you know, that she knows she's got daddy issues and yada, yada, yada. Baby, her mama told her point blank, listen, what you don't need to do is stay in a relationship that does not serve you. You don't stay in a relationship where you are not respected and revered. You do not stay in a relationship where you are not held to that standard. Like, that is what you, you don't do. You do not do any of those things, okay? And so... I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, she really don't get it. And I ain't here to tell nobody what they should or shouldn't do in their relationship, especially based on a limited view on a reality show. But the way I'm hearing you talk, you know where the deficiencies are in your relationship and you want it to work, but I don't see Cliff doing anything different wanting it to work. But that's just my two cents. So then we have the ladies meet up. We have um, um, Willie Wife. I don't know why I can't never remember her damn name. Um, a a a a Akisha, Akira, Akira, her, Akisha, Akisha, Marie, and So So Gucci meeting up. And basically, they just getting everybody caught up on what's going on. So So Gucci and Marie are telling Akisha about what Glenn did and how Glendon rolled up on um Leticia and you know what was going on with that um then they talk about um um Latrice and how Sosa Gucci is mad about what Latrice did and how she got put Latrice to the side because she like you know Latrice really showed me who she really is and now I got put her over here to the left to the left because she letting me know that she can't be trusted in that you know um and so honestly they threw a little bit of shade but it really was just a good lunch with the girls i like this scene i like saying that the girls just getting together getting caught up like i said they threw a little bit of jabs here there but it wasn't nothing harmful hurtful or na overly nasty um and it was their truth like they were just telling the story as they saw it and as they experienced it so i was here for it i appreciated it you know i thought it was cool 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 so then um So then we had Glenn meeting up with Cliff. Yeah, I feel like I lost some brain cells trying to follow this conversation. Glenn is talking to Cliff about what he got going on with Leticia. And Glenn admits that he has put a recording device and a tracker. He has put a recording device in her car and a tracker on her. I don't know if he's using uh, uh, the, 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 the Apple things or what he's doing but that's how he claims he found out <clears throat> about the house and everything cliff told that man you might need to just let this go she what he said wait a minute she getting her own place y'all not having sex oh you might need to just let this thing go and glenn was like i don't want to let it go I don't want to let it go. He said, you know, <clears throat> he said, you know, I'm, I'm, and, and what I feel like Glenn was saying is I'm about to cheat. Cause Glenn was like, look, I'm trying my best to hold out, but it's getting harder and harder. Like we ain't having sex and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to pop. And then Cliff said something about, well, put on a dress and see how that works. Glenn was like, what? Like you could tell in Glenn's face, he was like, put on a dress. I don't know what the hell Cliff was talking about. I don't know what putting on a dress had anything to do with Glenn being horny and ready to have sex and Leticia and not giving him none. But at the end of the day, Glenn is telling us that he was the one 
um, that he got a track on her and a recorder in her car, and that's how he know what's going on, and that's how he knew where to find her. And he also went and said that at the end of the day, um, he want to get back with his wife, but she making it harder and harder, and they not having sex, and he ain't like the fact that she went out of her way to go and um. She trying to get her own place. He ain't feeling that. Okay. Now, he did talk about his abandonment issues with his father. Or was this a later conversation? I don't know. But I'm going to just go ahead and say it now, child. And he talked about that when his father left, that was when he didn't see his mama anymore. I mean, he didn't really see his dad anymore. And that it was a 20-year gap. And so, he really doesn't want the same thing to happen with him and Leticia. That he doesn't, you know. And that's why he was so upset. Because he felt like she was taking his son away from him. Um... So I couldn't tell if you were, are you that upset because you feel like he's taking the son away or you that upset because you feel like she's taking like everything away. But neither here nor there, that's what the situation was, Chad. Um, and so it makes a little bit more sense, even though your tactics are not right. I mean, your tactics are very disrespectful, but it makes a little bit more sense that you're like, look, my mama, this happened to me. I went through this and yada, yada, yada. Then we had a really good scene. See, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, this this was a filler episode. Oh, it was boring. But there was some good stuff in here. Like I said, I really appreciated that scene with the three ladies at lunch. I thought that was a great sit down, no drama. Let's just talk and let's just, let's just have a girlfriend moment. But then this scene with Akeisha and her aunt slash mama. This was a really, really good scene. Okay? Now... What we find out, first of all, shout out to her auntie who got two PhDs. Bitch, do your thing. Okay? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call that woman bitch. Girl, do your thing. Much respect. Much respect. We find out that Akeisha, we get the, we get the breakdown of the, of the situation. I think she told us a little bit last season, but basically to make a long story short, Akeisha was the product of a side chick. Okay? She was the product of a side relationship. Her daddy had an affair with her mama, and so she was born. Her daddy is the elite family. Her daddy is the family that has these ties to, to Ferris Street and all these um, affluent, upper-middle-class, bourgeois, black bourgeoisie situation, which I find interesting that she didn't, you know, you didn't grow up like that, girl. She says she remembers running up and down Ferris Street, um, seeing all of the things, not knowing that that was her family that owned it, not knowing that that was her legacy. And if, but for the fact that her daddy said, yeah, that's mine, she wouldn't have had access to all of this abundance and all of this um, legacy and history. She'd be on the outside looking in going, that's my family and they won't, they won't claim me. But her father said, no, that's my daughter. And as a result, the aunt ended up adopting Akeisha and raising her and giving her all of the access to the the family, what the family had. So that is how Akeisha came into this abundant family. And again, I'm not saying she got act like she didn't grow up with nothing, but you would think you she was born into it instead of your family actually accepted you. Because had they not accepted you, girl, you'd be, you know... On the outside, talking about them, 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 my people, and they don't claim me. But anyway, but it was great to see and hear the breakdown. Um, and, you know, it was a great story, you know. So they were talking about all the family businesses and, and the trust and all that stuff. So I sound like they got a lot going on. And she said that she's still waiting to hear back on the development idea from the city council for Fair Street. Again, remember, they started filming season three not too long after the reunion. So... It seems like it's been a long time to us, but in real time, it really had only been a, maybe about a month or so. And stuff like that has to go before the city council. They have to vet it. They have to really probably go through committee, and then it has to come out, and then, you know, all that good stuff. So then we see Glenn down at the studio. Now, Glenn said he always been doing makeup, I mean, doing music. And they even showed us a clip from a music video from 2008, child. And he said that him and Leticia always communicate through music that she's always, you know, supported his music career or whatever. So he said he going to make a song for her. So, and let her know that that he don't want to lose her. So we get Glenn in the studio. JJ comes through. Now, let me tell you something. JJ is the hype man that you need in your life, okay? JJ came through and JJ act like, Glenn was about to go on tour 
with Young Thug. I don't know, Young Thug in jail, but I, the baby. I don't know who these people are, okay? He act like Glenn was about to headline a worldwide tour for, I don't know none of these people. I don't know, shit. I don't know. I can't even think of a, a name of nobody now, child. Hell, Cardi B, shit. I don't know. And don't get me wrong, the hook, I mean, the song sounded the hook. Y'all can't even finish that sentence. Neither here nor there, child. We see them talking and Glenn explaining that he trying to get his wife back and that hopefully she'll hear the song and she'll understand and it'll make everything all better. Now, while he's there, he gets a phone call. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. My DVR cut off. So, I didn't see the last seven minutes of this episode. But from the previews and from the the what I can gather, is he the last thing I heard him say was that they was rushing his grandmama to the hospital. Now, what I gather from the previews is that his grandmama is not doing too well. And Leticia comes around. Because, of course, they've been together since high school. She knows his grandmother well. Um, and they have a moment. Now, I didn't see the end, so my apologies to y'all, but I don't know what happened. My DVR just cut it off. It just, it just wasn't there. So, my apologies if I'm missing an important part of the storyline, but that's all I got. From the previews, it looks like his grandmama is probably going to end up passing. Maybe not, you know, right now, but, um, and Leticia is there to help him get through it. So, I guess that's how they're going to get back together, child. I don't know. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.